again. All right. So uh, before I reveal myself to the public at large, there's one essential thing I need to have before we can continue this podcast. Uh, as soon as it loads up in a second here, give me one. Give me well more than one second actually. There we go. Yes. All right. Now I can unveil myself. Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Bionis from Mission Star Podcast. I'm your host for this week's episode, as always. Uh, with me today to talk about everything in, in the video game uh, industry is no other than Greg Dietz. Hello, hello. And we were with Alex this week, so we're not going to yell at each other, although we could if we wanted to. Well. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed that episode. That was great. <laughs> that was that was a pretty yeah. awesome episode. Yeah, I mean, I've I've said it before. Like when we do this podcast, we just kind of give our opinion on the, whatever the subject is, and you and I are like, we don't disagree too much. And when we do disagree, it's very like debatey, where we're like, okay, your turn, okay, your turn. But yeah. Alex and I just when we disagree. We butt fucking head. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Alex is if you're wondering where he's at. He is actually playing D and D for today. So, which hey, D and D is a lot of fun. Um, but that's cool. And but we're, you're stuck with us, us boring folks. And we're talking about the news this week. Um, so I think we should start off with a game that was surprisingly announced. One of the few surprises you get every once in a while at a press conference. And we're talking about uh, the new Mario game coming to the new iPhone. Um, so it was unveiled just uh, the first few, in the first few minutes of the Apple conference that was held this past week. And uh, it's Shigeru Miyamoto came out, as you can see on screen, and he basically showed off a new Mario game for the new iPhone. Um, and it is a runner type game. You know, Mario was running the entire time, but you can tap on the screen to jump. Uh, you can perform his spin attack so he can float a little higher um and uh basically you know they have a, a score system where you can fight against other players uh well not other, other players but, like beat their score uh, and the goal of the game is to get to the end and collect as many coins along the way and now this is something that was tied into um this was something that was tied into uh what nintendo has already been doing for uh the mobile market recently not Pokemon Go per se, but in in the sense of like when they made that deal or made the announcement they're gonna have uh, they're going to mobile with some of their games, uh, you know, and the start of it was with the uh, with the Mitomo, um, was the start of it, and then eventually we got Mario. Eventually we have other games to come into the mobile as well, and this is just, and this is just a, a step in that direction, uh, especially because it's mobile is huge in Japan right now. Um, so it's no surprise there, um, but it was a surprise for much of us over here because we didn't expect a Mario game to be on the on uh, on the Apple announcement. But yeah, definitely is. Yeah. Um, so you know, what what are your thoughts on this, Greg? I I, I think it's a great idea. I think um, Nintendo's definitely trying to branch out. We've talked about this before, where they're definitely trying to expand their own brand to different areas. And I think for them, uh, not only mobile, but handheld or like take gaming on the go sort of thing is very important to them. And it's something that we're going to see more and more of, you know, from them. If, if the rumors to be true about, about their next main console, the NX and how it's like both a home console and a handheld console, Mm -hmm. that's going to be even more of a linchpin of how they want to push forward with, uh, with what they what they want to do um uh that being said i think that as a mario fan and being as biased as i am about mario (laughs) i will love super mario run however super mario run is really no different than every other um endless runner yep agreed runner agreed uh so cool but at the same time, eh? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there isn't much to say about it. The fact that it's on on, on it's the fact that we've seen Runners before on iPhone, uh, and, and they've been you know Mario clones per se, or like you know the, of, of that nature. 
Um, but we never had an official Nintendo Mario game on um, on the iPhone or App Store. Maybe there has been, and you know, I'm completely blind to that uh, that there is. Um, but to my knowledge, when it, with this announcement, it's like Nintendo, you know, already said they're going to the mobile market with their games. Um, but this, I feel like I feel like this is the uh, like official first step, like towards bringing their IPs to mobile and iPhone yeah, and so, Android devices. Yeah, so far, so far as I can tell. As far as I know, as I don't know, <laughs> uh, it's Mitomo, and that's it that they've brought. So, yeah, this is their first official one. Um, I mean, we can't really count Pokemon Go because it's not developed by Nintendo. Right, right. It's just okayed by Nintendo. Mm. And realistically, Nintendo has never itself developed a Pokemon game. That's always been Game Freak. Yeah, yeah. So. At the same, you know, that kind of falls into the same category. I think you know, Nintendo does own that property, which is a thing, and so we'll never get Pokemon outside of Nintendo. Um, but when I open up Pokemon Go, it says Niantic, and then warns me about a Gyarados on a bridge. Doesn't say Nintendo anywhere. Yeah. So Don't... I think that's important to remember as well. But the first Nintendo developed app was Mitomo, and this will be the second one. Mm-hmm. One of the things they touted in the uh, in the conference is like, <laughs> you can play this game with one hand, and you can eat a burger you wanted to, or eat an apple, you know. And then the first thing I think of is like, hey, you can play this with one hand. Guess what their hand's doing? Um, <laughs> but um, who is who is masturbating to Mario? Well, you know, <laughs> there's there's people out there who who, yeah, who do. I mean, I people are into judge. people are into fat Italian men, so they're, they're out there. Um. <laughs> Uh, I just have to tell people I'm Italian. Let's get this going. <laughs> uh, one of the things that it, it did give give me the idea of is like, so you know, with the recent announcement of like the Super Mario Maker on on 3DS, I think that if that was on the iPhone as a mobile game, I think that'd be great. <laughs> with the connectivity to the internet, I think that'd be awesome. Actually, thinking about it. But I think the only thing that kind of worries them is just like, you know, using the phone with your fingers to kind of pinpoint where exactly you want to create your level. Because, like, you know, sometimes the, the screen, how, uh, how, you know, how big your finger is, it's going to de- detect, you know, how you're going to swipe it or whatnot. And it's not always the best. So just throwing out ideas, Nintendo. So if you listen to this somehow, you know, hey, I think that'd be kind of cool to have it on the uh, on the iPhone. So, um, but yeah, Mario on the, you know, on iPhone 7, I, hey. I think it might, if anything, we'll probably see more of this at TGS. Uh, actually, this weekend coming up pretty soon. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, or this week, I should say. So. It'd be kind of rad if Nintendo announced like a second mobile app at TGS. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, they mm, they never <laughs> really announced anything as a, as a late in TGS. Like, I feel like they have the Nintendo Direct and they can use it whatever they want to. And they'll still get the same... Um, the same coverage as in at a new site, uh, and why compete that's at true. TGS? So, that's, yeah, that's very true. So, mm-hmm. oh, that'll yeah, be cool. I think, I think having it at the at the Apple press conference was more of like a we're definitely gonna have a stage for it. Whereas at TGS, they might not get the stage that they want in terms of like I, how many eyes are on it. Mm-hmm. So. Yep, definitely. Um, but yeah, we'll find out more details in the future. Now, we're gonna talk about another game that. Greg, you and I are pretty passionate about, which I, I know? W- well, I I, I want to believe so. Um, I mean, I think that uh, you know, one thing I, I still have not beaten is Mass Effect Three, so I'm <laughs> I'll get around <laughs> to it. I'll get I'll I'll beat it before Andromeda comes out because we got new t- details on the new Mass Effect game that hey, they just you know just showed like during the Sony press conference this past week. Like, just like, hey, here's some new uh, Mass Effect. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, so they showed off a, a like, just a you know, you're hopping from platform to platform. They had a cutscene, where like really pretty, really nothing really was shown that was new, other than just like how the world look in this one particular slice um, for the PS4 Pro, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, but the one of the things that was found out is that um, the main characters of this game is that they're both their brother and sister um and they i think it, what it was is like these are the siblings of shepherd from 
uh, what I've understood it. Siblings uh, or kids? Well, they're oh, it, yeah, they're his kids or they're her kids. kids. They're, they're, they are siblings and they are both from Shepherd. Got it. I misunderstood what you said. Mm-hmm. Um, so and it, and it, it kind of makes sense too, because like you know, looking at you know the the the, the girl who is uh, a part, uh, who is in Asari, I was like, oh okay, so if you chose you know. Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry from Mass Effect, uh, from last game, uh, and you know you end up with, with her, and like, hey, now you have her as one of the playable characters. Um, I'm quite sure if that's gonna change or not. In terms, well, like, you know, that seems. I'll say this much: that seems a little far fetched, just because. I hope that's not the case. I hope that they're not the kids of of Shepard, because, um. Let's say, for example, that is the case. You had, as a player, complete free will to sleep whoever with whoever you wanted. Yeah, that was your choice. You could, you could schmooze whoever you want. Um, if and 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 here's another issue: the the save data for that is on another console. Good point. Good and point. And they're not coming out with a remastered version for the new console that says, "Hey, your save data is going to come through." So I think it'd be really strange if they were just like, yeah, this is the person that Shepard actually slept with. If you slept with anybody else, it's non-canon would be really shitty and kind of like push away even more fans than the, than the ending already did. So I doubt that's the case. I really, really do. They could have also drawn like some statistics as far as like, you know, who ended up with who and say that maybe that the decision was like, hey, about 80 to like 70% of people who play this game ended up with the Asari than, you know, say, uh, the other characters. They could, but even even at that point, that's that's so, like, I mean, you're walking a fucking thin line right there. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I personally wouldn't care that much. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm thinking about, like, I've talked to people who hate that ending so much that they refuse to buy the next Mass Effect game. And if there was anybody that was like, I really still like Mass Effect, it's a really cool franchise, and I will continue to play the franchise as it comes out, but they're still like, they're kind of on the fence, they're like, but that ending really pissed me off, but I really enjoyed everything that led up to it, so no, no, no. Yeah, definitely. If that, if that came out... It would it would it would just destroy a lot of people, and I know that it would be bad for the game. So right, the I, I, I highly doubt that Bioware is doing that. The idea that the the if it, if this deems to be true that these kids are Shepherd's uh, kin or, or or siblings per se, um, that would mean that this would be and drama would be taking place in the future, like. Well, I already know it takes place in the future. It takes place well after the events of three. Like years, like fifty something years. Okay. And it's it's the whole, what they said at E3 and what I've read about it is that it it's a um, more of an exploration game uh, than it is a uh, like a direct story. Um, uh, then again, to that to that point, you know, as I argued last week, you can't always listen to what the developer says. There will probably be a really strong story, because I highly doubt that a Mass Effect game won't have a story. But instead of having a situation where um, you go to a planet and you have a direct path in which you take to fight whatever and get to the point, you're now given more of an open world sort of thing each time you land on a planet. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the exploration will come into play. Versus where the other games, it was like, the only time there's exploration is when you're on the Citadel or when you're over on this, like, planet where you're just talking to people. Um, I think now it'll just have, it'll be more open and more drivey bits. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there'll still be a really strong emphasis on story. There'll be a new threat that's going to kill everybody in the, gal in the, in the galaxy. Oh, yeah, and, definitely. Prince um, Redeem, man. <laughs> right, right, right. And I think that... Uh, if anyone's listening to this podcast, anybody, and you're excited about Andromeda, and in any way, shape, or form you feel like there's not going to be a strong story, please understand that developers talk about a lot of shit during development that never comes to fruition. So, one of the things also um, I want to point out is that this was 
Um, this was shown at the PS4 press conference this past week um, to kind of showcase the graphics. And while the graphics, you couldn't really can see them or convey them through a stream um, online from people, what I've heard, it's like the game looked really good. Among other games, it showed off in 4K. Um, which, whether the case, this is something that will add anything to it. I don't think so, but um, tying into that though, like, the whole reason for the Sony press conference this past week was to show off that uh, they unveiled a new console uh, called the PS4 Pro. See how that kind of segue into it? <laughs> master, yeah. master into it, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, this past week, uh, Sony held a mini press conference, I would say. Um, they didn't get a ton. Oh, to, sorry, go ahead. I Go ahead. Okay. Um, so they held a mini press conference this past week. Um, Invited some pe some media out there specifically, like a, a good handful came out. I want to say like a hundred or so. Um, and uh, with the announcement that play the Sony PlayStation or Sony, I should, I should say, uh, unveiled the PlayStation 4 Pro, which uh, this console uh, is basically a better version than the current one. Now, whether this is going, if this is indeed the, the Neo that people have been talking about for a long time, or this is just a stopgap to the Neo, is still a question I'm trying to figure out myself. Um, but details of what it exactly shown at the press conference, as I bring up the details. So, uh, just to also preference, they also announced the PS4 Slim which is a slimmed down version of the current PS4, which will be selling at uh, $300 on September 16th, which will be by the time this podcast is up, it will be this week. Um, and uh, it will come along with, you know, these needed accessories to connect your PS4. Um, and then also, oh, and apparently the PS4 Slim is also uh, slightly better than the current PS4. Um, and as, as, the sound, as the title uh, says, it is slimmer. It is 40% smaller. Um, and for those who are wondering, the dimensions of, uh, is 26.5 centimeters by 26.5 centimeters by 3.8 centimeters compared to launch PS4, which is 27.5, 30 centimeters, and 5.3. Nothing new there since, hey, every Sony console has always had seen a, a slimmer version of itself down the road. Um, also, the D-pad's better. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as uh, the PlayStation Pro, uh, that is launching on November 10th for $400. Um, and hang on a minute, let me bring up the details regarding that. I thought, I thought it was going to be on here, but I guess not. So I'm, go I'm going off of uh, GearGamer.net. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. PS4 Pro specs. Gotcha. Okay, so um, give me a second, real quick. Okay, yeah, still talking. All right, cool. Um, okay, so some, some body uh, specification we came with the PS4 Pro. Uh, let me see, going through. Uh, da, da. Okay, so one of the things the PS4 Pro has uh, is that you know, as it, as it says, it is actually a more powerful PS4, um, meaning that more RAM, um, meaning that the, the the graphics on there can reach 4K resolution if you want to. Um, although the weird thing is that there's no Blu-ray in the PS4 Pro, which is weird. Um, other things to note that um, they have upscaling for game for for games that are uh, you know able to be 4K or may not have it, but can upscale it natively. Which you know, hey, your games are gonna look good uh, either way. Uh, there's an updated DualShock 4 controller with light strip visible with one touchpad and USB transfer. A uh, third USB port uh, port in the, in the rear of the device. One terabyte hard drive, uh, Space S standard, which you can customize and get that yourself, really. Um, uh, Wi-Fi wi wi improvements, uh, which means that uh, you can now connect your Wi-Fi that holds up to 5 gigabytes, or, I don't know, kind of reading off there. Uh, streaming improvements, remote play up to 1080p on PC, Mac, and, Sir and Sephira. Share play from PS4 Pro to 1080p. Share improvements, 4K screenshots, 1080p, 1080p by 60, YouTube streaming, um, and uh, HDR was another thing, a bullet point as well. Um, 
that they pointed out that it's coming not only to the PS4 Pro, but also to the current PS4 and PS4 Slim with the update coming out this week. So, uh, all in all, basically, a whole better PS4 graphically. But the interesting thing about this entire thing is that it's they're maintaining the frame rate on all consoles to the same frame rate, whatever the case may be. If the game's 30 frames, it's going to be 30 frames on the other consoles. They're making sure that they don't want to have a game that is going to be different or superior than another game um, when it comes to some features of it. The only thing that they are going out of their way is to make sure that their games all line with each other and that the only difference is just graphically it's better. So yeah, this is I've been so before I talk, Greg, what is your what is your thoughts on on, on all this? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it seems like Sony is just trying to keep up at this point. Um, we kind of talked about this back when um, uh, sorry, we kind of talked about this back when um, uh people were upset that they're that you know i just bought a ps4 and now they're doing a a uh a slim version that's bullshit blah blah blah, or a better version whatever um and we talked about how companies constantly do this well usually when they do this they're not trying to make a better console for the sake of their games they're trying to make a better console for the sake of their lifespan um and that's what it sounds like they're doing here they're just making a console that's better for their lifespan for the lifespan of the system as a whole. Um, it's not the greatest console in terms of like what it can do, but it's definitely better than the previous one. And as for the frame rate thing, dude, like we're always going to have that. We're always going to have a frame rate issue when it comes to consoles because consoles just don't have as good of an ability to do a high frame rate like PC does. Not to mention, if we want to talk about science for a second, the human eye can only pick up 30 frames a second. Mm -hmm. Our brains tell us that it's a higher frame rate because we just want to see it that way. So, you know, maybe stick to 30 frames per second. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't worry about it too much. Possibly. The thing for me about all of this, and I've been, I've been kind of been. Here, just kind of looking at you know what other people are saying about their opinions about it, um, about you know this new PS console announcement. Now, if it is if it is true that this is just a stopgap up to the Neo, I don't know if this was a good decision on on Sony's part because then you have literally four base models. You have the original PS4, you got the PS4 Slim, which is slightly better. Then you got the PS4 Pro, which is uh, better than the PS4 Slim uh, graphically specifically um, as well as like any, any anything else they put in there and then you got the PS4 Neo which down the road is going to be the best version of Sony PlayStation and um, looking at the way that is kind of going it's uh, going to like the cell phone method like you know iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Plus was announced, you know I have an iPhone 4 people are going to you know, either wait to get in their iPhone or jump on the newest one. And the difference is that this is in a two, three year, um, at right now in the current generation. Normally when it comes to new consoles, we're very used to four or five years. And then a new, new console will signify the new next generation of consoles per se. So when it comes, when it comes to this, um, I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think it was a a good decision. I don't think a good decision. But I don't think this was a decision that Sony needed to make. I feel like Sony was in a pretty good spot as it was, um, and whether to push that idea of another console on a lot of consumers. Um, well, like I said, it just seems like they're trying to keep up. Yeah, and on top of that, like I, I want to say it's a huge, a huge blunder. But one of the things to kind of point out is that the Xbox One S, I mean, yeah, Xbox One NS, that's what's called, right? <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, yeah, One S. It, it offered Blu-ray versions, with the, which the P, uh, the PS4 Pro doesn't. Um, just something to, to point out. But the thing also too is like, I feel like the game industry, specifically just Sony and Microsoft, 
and I'm not quite sure what Nintendo is thinking about when it comes to 4K or whatnot. Um, is Probably that we aren't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that I don't. I think placing a bet. I want to say well, gambling or placing a bet on that 4K is going to be the next big thing because that's where these consoles are kind of advocating for when they're showcasing games like Mass Effect, games like um, uh, Laura Croft, um, able to change on the fly. Like you can go from 4K to 1080p to you know this other resolution. And if you don't have, if you don't have 4K, you have HDR, which is you know really good. I think the worst example that was shown in that presentation was for, for one of their new games. It was like, you know, a comparison of like what HDR looks to what 4K looks, and it was like a slight difference. And even then, you can t- you can tell through the stream. So like, I feel like it's like the 3D TV thing back then. Back then, 3D TVs were a quote unquote the rage, um, or were particularly the next you know big thing that happened with the game industry, and that that it was going to hold new interact- interactivity. But what ended up happening is like that fell through. And it, that didn't go anywhere, and it failed. I feel like 4K is it, it is a bet, and whether you know it becomes an expect big thing, you know, we we'll wait and see. But right now, I don't know that many people who own 4K TVs, and they're pretty expensive right now. So yeah, didn't we talk about this on the podcast a long time ago about how 4K TVs are kind of ridiculous and not necessary, and yet like. They're going to be as popular as those 3D TVs were for a hot minute there, and and then I, suddenly they'll die out. I'm not, I, I can't remember. Was... I can't remember if we really talked about it per se, but I know that com- it, this was at least brought up. Um, it's again, it, it's a gamble. I don't know if this will be the next big big thing or not. It just depends on like affordability. If we're talking about 4K TVs that are affordable, you know, that I can pick up, you can pick up, that anybody can pick up, really. Then yeah, I think maybe it'll have a good chance. But as of right now, mostly everybody has LCD screens that are like you know they may be big or small and they have a pretty good resolution. Um, I don't know if 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 I, I don't feel the need right now to bump up to 4K unless to see I want to see some like you know detailed stuff. Can you imagine 4K porn? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> as, as if like it was funny too because when. When it when it switched from like uh, SD to HD, when it came to uh, when it came to that, like some some people within the porn porn industry were like saying like, oh man, I, I and like I'm more self aware now because like you could see every pimple and detail <laughs> on my skin that you weren't able to see before, um, and that not no form of makeup can hide it. <laughs> so like 4K is like you could see just everything, no matter no matter what. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I, yeah, I, mean, I just don't think this was a good idea on Sony's part. I think that again, it's a bet with the 4K TV, and and in this instance, if this is true again with the this is a stopgap before the Neo, then it's like, as a consumer, like it, it, it feels like, do you want which version would you want to get per se, depending on what you want to play and whatnot. But if you're like average Joe out there, so it's like. And you go into a GameStop, it's like, all right, I want a PS4. And then, you know, they tell them, like, okay, which one do you want? The Slim, the the regular, the, the Pro, or, you know, the Neo. And the guy's going to be confused as hell. It's like, oh, which one? What's the difference? So, um, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I think this is not – I think this was – uh, what's what we're looking for? It was a move I, I think they, they didn't really need to have because they're, they're already sitting pretty – pretty solidly like on top of in the game industry when it comes to consoles and which ones we're, we're selling out so yeah i mean i mean we can go with like the the number of sales for the past few months versus the consoles and xbox has outsold them in the past like i think three or four months mm-hmm. so maybe sony's starting to sweat it a little bit but i don't know the other thing that also it it, it kind of gave me oh, uh, pardon me wow that came out of nowhere <laughs> Oh man, that auto was gonna be great. Um, the other thing, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to point out too, which is like I feel like both companies are reacting to each other. I feel like whatever Microsoft does, Sony's reacting to. Whatever Sony does, Microsoft's reacting to. And I get that you want to get a leg up on your competition, but at some point, I feel like if you're just making something for the sake of getting a leg up on the other competition, just to get a slightly you know more more sales rather than kind of focusing on ideas within your own 
company, I feel like that that you're having one company dictate what your company is doing. And I yeah, don't. No, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm. It feels like that. I'm not sure if this, you know, some Sony or Microsoft rep says like they're gonna say like, oh no, that's not, that's totally false. We're not doing that. That's what I, that's how I feel right now with the current console generation right now. In fact, if anything. It's a much better time to be a PC player than anything else right now because <laughs> uh-huh. everything that the consoles are going through, PCs and Macs, are not going through any of this, and we get to play a whole bunch of cool games. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it seems like people are tired of the console wars, and mm-hmm. the uh, the war can only last if the consumer is invested, and that is clearly not the case anymore. Yeah. Multi-platform games are, are more of a thing. Like games, games you would normally see that were exclusives back in the day, you see very few of them now. Like there'll still be exclusives that you know they'll still announce at press conferences, but most of the games that come out now are multi-platform. So it's kind of the only reason why you get a console if you want X game, and even then, some sometimes that may not be the case. So, yep, consoles. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so going away from the PS4 and all that and all that stuff. Actually, no, we'll stick to PS4. And I kind of wish Alex was here for this, but uh, the other no- news story out of the PS4 this past week, which some would argue that Sony's been shooting themselves in the foot for this past week, um, is the fact that uh, Fallout 4. Uh, give me a second, actually. Let me bring up the B-roll. There we go. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, the fact. So the the announcement was that. Um, Sony will not, uh, well, at least the, the, the PS4 version, will not have mods uh, included for Fallout 4, which was init- uh, originally announced by Bethesda at their press conference this past year at E3. That was going to be on, well, no, was it this panel no, was last year. Uh, that there are going to be mods coming to the both Xbox One and PS4. It's on Xbox One, but not on PS4. And if you're PC, again, you get everything. Um, so. But I'm not so you know I, I play Fallout for a bit, and I know that mods are a lot of fun. Just look at Skyrim, you know, and the mo- Macho Man, the Randy Savage yeah. mod job. I just think one of yeah. the greatest things ever. Um, so there was a question. I mean, I get it too. There's a question of like which mods were you able to like have on the PS4. You know, which ones are you know you can't obviously use that are copyrighted or may exceed the size limit of what the the, the mod you can put on the PS4. Um, so I guess they decided to do away with the entire thing, um, just because, uh, you know, there could be issues along the way, um, which sucks, for, which sucks for a lot of Sony players, because, like, the mods for Fallout, for the entire series, actually, um, are really good, and they're really, really awesome, um, and if you wanted to play a PS4 Fallout, I mean, if you want to play a Fallout 4 game with mods, play it on Xbox One or PC, so... Which are both Microsoft products. <laughs> so, yeah, it sucks. Um, but, yeah. Uh, nah. Well, you know, I, I just want to throw this out there. Like, you didn't buy Fallout 4 for mods. You bought it for Fallout 4. Well, if you depends enjoy who you Fallout ask. 4. Who? And, and the, on, on a further note, Anthony. Yeah. If somebody is buying Fallout 4 for mods, why are they buying it on console? Because they they can't handle the PC, or like they can't their PC can't handle the game. That's stupid. Well, that's kind of how that's what it used to be. Like in back in the day, when consoles were uh, were you know somewhat on par or or better at times than the PC or Mac version. You know there was there was more of a incentive to buy the console version because. At the time, when I was, you know, early on, my PC couldn't handle anything, so I depended on consoles to play that better-looking version of the game, and it's going to be uh, something that's always going to be constant. Now, you know, it's different, um, but I can I can see that argument for people who are saying like, my my computer is not the greatest. I'm just going to buy this console and let it, you know. I've heard a lot of good stuff about the mods. I want to have those mods in my console for PS4. Having the news, the fact that it's not coming out, you know, those people, you know, will be bummed. As a console player, being bummed is fine. I don't. Being bummed is not an issue. Being pissed off and upset—that's a whole different can of worms. If you bought Fallout 4 on your PS4 and you went, 
man, I really want to play uh, Fallout 4. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait for mods. That's going to be fun. And then you hear that it's not there. You kind of go, oh, well, because that's not that wasn't the intended purpose of, of the game as a whole. The game has so much content and so much availability to you that to buy it simply for mods is such a weird concept to me. Even on PC, it's a weird concept. Um, to be bummed about it, fine. I totally get that. If you were looking forward to something and now it's not available, sure. But you can't be pissed off because it's not there. You can't be pissed off and be like, oh, it's not worth my 60 bucks because there's a whole fucking game there. There is. There is. My, my, my point being that the mod, the mods give like the you know some of these games a, like a good second life um outside of the main game because after the main game is over you know there's tons of mods out there that you know have like their own storylines or like have things that you know you want to check out um and yeah, how much second life do you need in your game when the game takes hours upon hours upon hours to beat uh trust me there's a tons tons of good ones out there and i think that having i think it's a cool idea to have those mods out there to continue the life cycle of the game. Because oftentimes when we play games that, you know, we love to play and we finish them, we often move on to the next game. If well, there... okay, okay. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that mods are a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. I'm saying that... What I'm saying is that if you purchase a game mm -hmm. for mods, mm -hmm. you're probably buying games for the wrong reason. Um... Does that make sense? Like, if I go and, like, the best analogy I can come up with is if I go and buy a car just because its wheels look cool, I don't give a shit what's under the hood, that's kind of a dumb reason to buy the car. And that's what this is to me. It's like, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy this game just for mods when there's a whole fucking game there. Yes. To be, to be fair, mod on consoles are still relatively new. And oftentimes it's nothing, or oftentimes it's usually just a base game. Mods are usually, you know, again, stick to the PC or, or, or Mac version. And having these on consoles is particularly still rather new. So to that point, you're right. Because it has not happened a whole lot. But it does breathe uh, another life cycle to a game that may otherwise be dead. Or, well, not dead per se, but like, you know, that you'd be done and you move on to the next game. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll say that, that the Fallout, specifically for Fallout games, like, mod, the mods are particularly very important when it comes to expanding, you know, whatever new content is out there for the game. Well, I think that's Bethesda games as a whole, too, is that, like, a lot of the mods that came to, like, let's say, let's say, uh, um, Skyrim, they didn't happen until well after the game had already come out. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, watch the Game Grumps play it, or when I, I say Game Grumps, like, Danny and Ross play it, and they have mods on. Like, the, especially the, uh, the, um, Macho Man Randy Savage one. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the time that those mods had come out, Ross already knew how to beat the game in a speedrun format. Because he had played it so much prior to that. Imagine, if you will, he had spent over 100 hours in game time and then no mods happened because Bethesda was like, no, we're not doing mods anymore. Go fuck yourself. Would he have the right to be upset? I say nay nay. <laughs> I want to say you're right, but I will say if you uh, I'll, I'll say this. And let's let's, let's just say that, you know, there, uh, out of the three versions, you had the PC, Mac, Xbox One, PS4. If you told me that I can play this game on Xbox One with all these mods that I've heard so much about throughout the, the Fall community, or you know that I've heard about a lot, that I can check them out and play them on Xbox One, cool. I can do the same thing on PC and Mac, but I can't play it on the PS4. And again, people are gonna be bummed. That's fine. And while people are upset, some some will, just because like they feel left out, out of the other consoles and other PCs out there uh, that have it and may not 
get that experience. And they can find some ways to figure it out. You know, there's videos online you can watch online of, of you know, what the mods look like or whatnot. But particularly to play it, um, some people will be, you know, pissed or bummed. Um, whether the case that they're buying the game specifically for the game itself or for mods, you know, to each their own. Um, and to that, I'd say, you know, hence why DLC is out there. So, yeah. So that's pretty much my viewpoints on, on, on the whole thing. Um, so, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, yeah, I mean, like it, it's to each your own, what, what they're buying the game for. But I feel like at the same time, like it's a bum deal sometimes when it comes to certain things and I get it. Um, although I'm kind of curious why it works on Xbox one then PS4 is my question. So windows 10. It's just easy. Uh, to it that way. good point. Very good point. I forgot about that. Yeah. Good point. So, okay. Good to know. All right. So, going away from the PS4 and all its madness when it came to the past week of news. Uh, going from that to an event I attended this past year, Evo. Now, uh, one of the big news that came out of Evo when I was there was that Evo announced that there's going to be an Evo Japan. Um, that there's going to be the same type of deal well, there's going to be a bunch of games people, people can play in the past, you know, or in the, in the three-day event that Japan's going to hold it. Um, and that they are going to play the, you know, whatever's going to be voted or where, however they're going to coordinate it. The news out of that, or one of the big news out of that actually is, hang on just a second. Let me just X out some of these posts. Ah, um, this is from uh, SRK or Suruken.com. Um and Evo Japan, LLC, now a registered legal entity in Japan, has huge media conglomerate backing. Uh, and this was written by Corey Missing Person Lanier. Uh, before top before the top eight of Street Fighter V at Evolution 2016, we were treated with the announcement of Evolution Japan. While details have been scarce since then, we have we were promised more details at TTS. Uh, with Tokyo Game Show looming on the horizon, we were treated to information in the uh, affirmative that Evolution Japan was indeed moving forward swimmingly. For Gamer, a Japanese gaming publish, uh, publication, released information translated by Ryan Fubardock Harvey that Evil Japan LLC has been registered as an official legal entity in Japan as of late September. It is a joint venture of SRKX Productions, our parent company, and operate of Evolution Championship Series, and three Japanese companies who I spit who oh, have split a $1 million stake into the company Hearts United Group, a subsidiary of ATIS, owners of 4Gamer, uh, Shukoku Broadcasting, and ATIS. We have Heart United Group owning 45% stake of the company and ATIS owning an additional 10%. This makes ATIS a major owner of Evo Japan LLC, which is nuts to think about because here's the thing. Evo over here, like, it started off as a ground roots thing. And it, it only recently, this past year, got on the ESPN because the money was so big. We weren't sure as far as like, how exactly it was going to be in Japan when the announcement with Evo Japan happening. The fact that big companies are already backing this already in, J in Japan, and this is not even debuted yet, and we'll get more details at TGS is nuts to me which means that this is picking up a lot more steam than i think anybody within the fighting game community realized than where it would have originally started from um it, it's it's crazy to, to think about um but i i think they understand how big it is here and they can bring that to japan um specifically like the marketing they can do for that for that tournament series over there as well as the games is, is more in question is what they can bring um and i would assume that the games are going to be lining up for to play that evo in japan is going to be much different than over here um only because like the taste of what games are very popular in japan versus games over here uh, are very different uh so we might end up seeing some like broken games like the uh what was it called uh <laughs> fist of the north star fighting game which was like literally like infinite until somebody dies or um 
you'll see games that you know are very familiar with us like you know Street Fighter 5 that may be over there as well so just the fact that like these companies are backing this Evo up in in Japan and Evo not even have, hasn't even started yet in Japan is crazy but very very awesome to think about um so yeah um they're gonna have more details at TGS so definitely we'll find out more information about it uh but it's really really encouraging I'm very very very, very happy about it so yeah. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I, I, I have nothing to add to that. Just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I knew you had nothing to add to it, so I was like, ah, I'm going to take this minute to, to gush over the news. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I'm pretty excited for it, so we'll definitely see some more details out of it. Um, and then, is this the last story of the day? Um, yeah, okay. Last story of the day. Now, we talked about mods earlier. Um... Well, take that back. We have another story. I'm am I saying? Duh. I forgot to put it in here. All right. Um, we'll talk about this anyways. Uh, so, uh, there is an emulator out there called the Dolphin Emulator. Uh, and it's been out there for a while. Uh, and it, uh, emulates GameCube games, uh, N64, and whatnot. Recently, they have come out and announced that they can emulate every GameCube game to man to ex existence on their emulator um and this is like 5.0 version of dolphin um all, i have an entire article regarding the details of which you can find on dolphin uh dash e um but i'll read the oh, oh, oh. this so um with this rewrite Dolphin has taken another big leap in ex uh, ex uh, accuracy under the hood. While most users shouldn't see the, uh, a difference, a few random crashes here and there should be sorted out. It's bittersweet in a way, while it's mon monumentous occasion to get the, uh, take the last game to be It also uh, denotes that there aren't many really huge industries remaining, while some games still crash and there are a lot of issues still tackled. story out of all this is the guys who uh, helped develop the emulator has now got to play with uh, emulate every GameCube game in existence uh, on it, which is very, very impressive. So, mm -hmm. yep, and, uh, and ob obviously, like, one of the things we advocate is we don't advocate for piracy in other way, but the fact that the existence of this emulator once you know whatever when it's once game cubes are no longer in existence or disc we have this as an archive of you know what game cubes looked like and played like in the yesterday in the yesteryear i was gonna say is it piracy if if it's really hard to get a hold of a GameCube nowadays um it doesn't get that money anyway i would say well i don't think so but Nintendo will say yes, it is because it's still a Nintendo product. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and I'm. It's it's really cool to see the emulation of these games come much faster and better um, when it comes to certain console uh, consoles and games. Um, and there was was it, I think the most like up to date one was like somebody was out there was working on a PS3 emulator, which is nuts. <laughs> but <laughs> they managed to get it pretty far. I was like, wow, the emulation did the, the it's crazy. Emulation. emulation of these games 
and consoles are crazy. And with technology we have in, in, in today's market when it comes to PCs and Macs, it's not that hard to do, but this, well, I say that, but then I'm pretty sure it's pretty damn hard. But I just the, the, the fact that there's people out there who are doing that uh, to archive these games, um, it's great. And I, I, lo I love the idea. So good stuff to those guys. I, 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 uh, I would, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I tip my, my veteran water to you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, so we do have one more story. I forgot to just put this in the title, and that is some well wow, news. Some news that hey, Alex is not here for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the news from Blizzard is that World of Warcraft, the new uh, the new expansion Legions, um, they announced that Blizzard's new expansion. For their MMO, matches launch day record with 3.3 million sold. Heroes of the Horde and Alliance from around the globe unite as World of Warcraft Archives' highest launch week player con uh, concurrency since Cataclysm. Yeah, this is Cataclysm. off. The, yes, and this is a press release off of Blizzard's website. Uh, Blizzard, I cannot talk today. Jesus. <laughs> um, off of Blizzard's website. Uh, and I'll read a little bit more here. Um, with, with Azeroth on the brink of destruction, heroes from around the world were summoned to drive back into the, the Burning Legion's army last week. Oh. With the launch oh of the... Oh my god, I apologize. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, armies last week with the uh, launch of, of the World of Warcraft Legion, the sixth expansion to Blizzard Entertainment's acclaimed massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Today, Blizzard has announced that the players have forged to truly formal defensive front as the as of the expansion first full day of launch on August 30th, more than 3.3 million copies of Legion has sold through matching the all-time record archive by previous expansions and making it one of the fast-selling PC games ever. In addition, World of Warcraft's launch the week player concurrency climbed to its highest point since since the 2010 launch of Cataclysm uh, expansion as champions from around the world united to strike mighty first blow against the fell invaders but the battle has only just begun um it's crazy because and here's why because world of warcraft came out what 2001 i want to say hang on let me, let me check it real quickly um i have no idea world of warcraft blizzard's always uh no it came out until 2004 oh, that's right 2004, great for game by the way. Um, like uh, that game came out in 2004, and since then Blizzard has updated and supported that game for what? Twelve? Let's see, four, yeah, twelve years, which is nuts to, to think about. Um, and the fact that you know they are still cranking out expansions for this game, and that they were uh, definitely being like they're still making tons of money from it. Um, the one thing that is interesting, the fact that like back in the back in its heydays, there was always other companies trying to steal that thunder from WoW, but nobody could, could do it. Um, like the WoW killer per se, that you know it would be very popular for about a good month, and then everything went back to WoW. <laughs> it's just the way it worked, especially with a new expansion. People would stop. And go play the new expansion for that for for the game um and it's to this day it is still the most played mmo out there not even blizzard like was able to make another mmo to kill up their own mmo um because they were because you know before overwatch was a thing like the original title for i'm gonna say overwatch but like kind of their new mmo was titan and uh the, the the you know details of what happened and why 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 it changed to overwatch um you know are still remain a mystery but um like that did not go, come off the ground as much as they wanted to and then they just went back to support uh wow uh and man it's still it's still kicking it's still it's crazy to think about i'd say world of warcraft and eo online are like two of the longest running mmos to existence right now and um what was it eve just recently went free to play after 
a very very long time since it was announced and released um and i don't th is i don't think wow is free to play i don't think so um i know that i think it might be one of the last remaining mmos i still have a subscription model um to my knowledge if i'm wrong let me know correct me on youtube or on this on the podcast and i'll make sure to correct that for later use um but yeah no, it, it's it's nuts to think about but it's really cool about blizzard to kind of show like you know they'll support a game as long as people will keep playing it so yeah for sure so the one thing i will say though is like uh when they move on to world, world of warcraft 2 whenever they man whenever that will be i want to see them like do the same thing like the, the the previous story i talked about that was like weeks ago where like the last day of of wow like just like an apocalypse happened and asteroids are coming from the sky to destroy the entire world <laughs> that would be great oh man um or maybe some cool fetch i don't know maybe a cool movie oh wait there was one <laughs> it didn't do too well um which i need to go I, I honestly i still need to go see like when it comes out on dvd or whatever uh this tuesday i'm actually like kind of pushing people to go there to pick up um uh pop star pop star is it's the uh film by uh um oh my god what's his name uh andy sandberg oh gotcha gotcha huh yeah there definitely should be some more conversation about this of some sort of movie podcast per se hint hint nudge nudge um <laughs> okay yes, sir. yeah definitely so um all right so that's going to do it for this show um so before we end the show greg where can i find you on the internet uh you can follow me on twitter facebook and instagram at chub rock Eek. you can follow me on snapchat at chub rock snap um I do a stream for a channel called Twitch or called Half Empty Interesting. You can follow that on. Whew, let me try that one more time without stuttering <laughs> over my fucking voice. I stream every Saturday on Half Empty Energy Tank's Twitch channel. You can follow that at twitch.tv slash half empty energy tank. Uh, I do st I stream Saturdays at five, but uh, sometimes it, I, I cover for other people. So, you know, follow the channel. Find out when I stream. Um, and uh, on occasion, I write reviews. I've been lackluster on that as of late just because of life. But uh, um, I should have one coming out soon. So awesome. Keep, a, keep an eye. Awesome. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Effect of Naruto. You can, you can follow the work that we do on our website at missionstartpodcast.com. Um, and uh, also, you can follow me on my own Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash callmaster4. For my own personal things I do, including art, uh, Skullgirls, and single-player games. Um, so hang on a minute. So if you enjoy this podcast, if you enjoy watching it on YouTube, or if you enjoy uh, listening on audio, check out the podcast on our website at missionstarpodcast.com under the podcast section. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher. Just look up Mission Star Podcast. If you enjoy convention talk, if you enjoy us talking about previous conventions we, we've been to, you know, and we then go on on a podcast and critically review them as best we can uh, about our experiences, check out The Conover, which is also is in the podcast section of our website at missionstartpodcast.com, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher. And last but not least, if you enjoy comic books, entertainment, movies, um, basically just like a more wide range of, of of nerdy stuff check out the rolling 20s hosted by jeremy wilson which you can also find on our website in the podcast section um and also on itunes and stitcher as well as on youtube as well when it comes to some videos that don't get you know copyright written because hey co copyright on youtube sucks uh so yeah <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, it's the facts, folks. It's the facts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you again. Uh, I know that we're getting close to 600 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is freaking awesome. So thank you so far for supporting us on our YouTube channel and all the videos we've been doing so far, including this podcast and many others. 
Um, expect more content in the future. Uh, also, I'm going to uh, KrakenCon this year, so expect some video footage of that in the near future to, to, to this YouTube channel. Anyways, that's going to do it for us. Thank you again, and we will see you guys next time.